Mr. Max Bashir, President of the South Australian National Football League. Max, season 1980 has certainly been a wonderful one for the South Australian National Football League, firstly at interstate level. We're very proud of the performance of our state side. Uh, a lot of hard work has gone into making that possible. And I think it's appropriate that I should mention that we owe a great debt to three people in particular. Ray Kutcher, the chairman of selectors, Foster Williams, the manager of the side, and Neil Curley, the coach, as well as to the players who took part in all of those matches. Michael back looking for Pete. Mark Williams in front on this occasion. Fisted away by West and a chance for Hosman. Puts a long one in, puts it in high, puts it in straight. Oh! What a goal to Kimmy Hosman. It'll be Michael in opposition to Kennedy who gets up high but Michael towards Cracker, he tunnel balls it, Gallagher for South Australia to the half forward line, Davies wants back up support, he's got the pace to break around, puts it in the air and he's put it through! Fine goal to Rick Davies, here's a chance now for Sewer, get round on the dangerous left leg, he's got the ability, he puts it through and what a goal to the Woodville Flash, South Australia's half forward Ralph Sewer. And two here at Football Park. Gigantic strides have been made in 1980. We're very proud of Football Park. We think it's a great venue. And also, we've been concerned for a long while with the fact that the patrons in the outer have had no protection from the weather. With the completion of the first stage of that development, we're now able to say that there are 3,500 seats for those people under cover. We think that's a fairly good situation. And record attendances must be keeping each of the delegates happy. Yes, it's been a very good year for attendances and uh, I think that uh, we'll probably finish up the season with an aggregate of about 40,000 more than last year at the similar period. At a time when uh, most spectator sports are suffering from a decline in attendances, it's a very pleasing aspect. And finally, to one of the highlights of the season, the McGarry Medal. To win the McGarry Medal must be the aim of every league footballer and the league is happy to be associated with the presentation of the 1980 McGarry Medal Count. The 1980 McGarry Medal presentation is brought to you by Hallett Brick, the Northern Territory Tourist Bureau, Twaits Menswear, and the South Australian Brewing Company. Good evening everyone and welcome to the 1980 McGarry Medal presentation. My pleasure to be a host for the next two hours and already over 200 invited guests have assembled here at the Old Lion Hotel, past McGarry medalists, some of the great names in South Australian football, coaches, league delegates, players and most importantly the men in white, the people who have adjudicated on the players performances throughout the year. Who in fact will win the 1980 McGarry Medal? In one moment's time, Peter Marker poses that question for the gentleman who won the medal in 1979, Johnny Duckworth. It's a mighty lot of miles 
times you've had to travel to race against the cream of the crop. It's a mighty lot of miles to America and back. And coming home means coming home on top. Come home, hold it up. Come home to the cheers. Come home with a cup. Come home to West End beer. Since 1890, South Australians have got their gear from tweets. Cost you less Since 1890, South Australians have saved on famous mates. Come on into Tweets for Glow Weave Short Sleeve Night Moves in planes and prints. And Glow Weave Ram Short Sleeve Knit Shirts in a great range of designs and colours. Glow Weave quality at a great Tweets price. Since 1890, South Australians have saved on famous mates at Tweets. There's a story about a land that's the oldest known to man Where the buffalo and who are running free Where the color of the sky has to tend to be desired Where there's magic in most everything you see That's just a part of the story about the Northern Territory It's like nothing else that you've ever seen It's all a part of the story about the Northern Territory You won't know how it ends till you've been Gather round, people, and you will see we got all the good news from the Howard Company. Yeah. Granddaddy was smarter. He knew all the tricks. He built his old house with stones and bricks. And yeah. big solid walls to keep out the weather. Keep the family real cool. Keep the family together. Now, if you're going to build yourself a brand new house, it's double brick you want, both inside and out. And when you're choosing your bricks, you can take it from me. Go and see the people at the Howard Company. Howard Bricks, now and forever. Yeah. John Duckworth, the winner of the medal last year. John, uh, you probably ought to know what, uh, what you need to win a medal. Who's going to win it this year? Well, it's very hard, Peter. Uh, I had a uh, great surprise last year, and, but uh, my selection this year is Michael Taylor because he's come from a side who, uh, you know, they haven't had a great lot of uh, blokes who will take votes away from him, and I think he's had a great year, and, I, and he's my selection. Yeah, well, he's a, a favourite with a lot of people. John, talking about last year, that, that must be a night that you'll never forget. Well, it is, Peter. You know, uh, I've uh, had some great times in my life, but uh, a night like that uh, is the greatest night of my life, and I hope that the bloke who, whoever wins it tonight has as uh, much satisfaction as what I did. I'm sure he will. John, uh, not so good this year, although uh, I've seen some of your games and you've played extremely well, but uh, the man in white caught up with you. Yes, you know, I, I started off the year on the wrong foot, getting injured the first game. Um, that put me out for three, nearly four weeks, and then I came back. I probably came back too early. Um, my form started to improve, then I got a couple of more injuries. Um, then, I, as you say, I got caught up by the man in white for having a bit of a chat to him. <laughs> but uh, towards the end of the season, I, I thought my season was, uh, you know, the end of the season particularly, I played pretty well. and. Uh, I hope that next year I can carry on the same way. Aha, uh -huh. now next year uh, there's a lot of speculation. What's John Duck Duckworth going to do? Well, it's still up in the air, Peter. I, uh, I've had an offer from Centrals uh, because, as you know, my uh, contract's expired there. Um, I've got an offer from two, two clubs in Perth and uh, it's up in the air until Wednesday when I uh, decide my future. Well, there it is from John Duckworth. Let's hope, well, let all South Australians hope that John Duckworth stays with Centrals for 1981. Ebert, Norsworthy, Norton left it, Clifford didn't, Clifford running through centre-half forward, Booms one in towards goals, it's going awfully close, but Duckworth back there takes a fine, well-judged mark in defence. Back it comes to Hoffner, the racehorse through centre-half forward, Booms one towards full forward, Evans from behind, Duckworth from in front, and John Duckworth takes a fine mark. Port Adelaide again, this time it's Darwin. Look at the big fella bursting his way through. 
pops one up towards the square. Duckworth and Evans. Duckworth. Chance to put the dogs into attack. Does it well up towards full forward. John Duckworth in front. Riley there, but Duckworth, a great mark. Puts it in towards Duckworth now. He's going to be short. Uses his pace well, wants backup support. Gets it now from Van Domelhor. Dropped an easy chance. Duckworth again in the one two. Over to Bythine. Doesn't want him. Shoots in long. Has got a goal. Duckworth's fourth. And that's something that North Adelaide ha have to get over now. They haven't got much time. Up towards the half forward line. Duckworth on the lead. And Duckworth takes the mark on the half forward line for the Bulldogs. There's the catch. That's how to use a body. And he's got it, plenty of body, John Duckworth. Port General Manager Bob McLean. Bob, on the eve of your retirement, congratulations. 32 years at Port Adelaide and you've built up a fine record. Thanks very much, Ian. Over the years, 21 grand finals, 13 premierships, eight times runner-up and only three times out of the five. What makes Port Adelaide such a powerful club? Jeez, I didn't realise it was all that good. <laughs> <laughs> you feel better? Yes. Uh, well, I suppose... You know, we'd have to say that uh, knowing what success is all about, uh, it's easier than trying to uh, find the formula, isn't it? And uh, uh, we have, you know, had our share of it over the years and, you know, we don't get carried away. I think we've always got our feet on the ground and I have noticed that perhaps uh, one or two other clubs uh, that I've, you know, been in contact with down the years, they get a bit carried away with a little bit of success and they think the, oh, they've got the game scum and uh, it's not that way at all. In those 13 premierships, have you got one that stands out more than the others? Yes, I, I would have to say the uh, 1958 premiership, which was the last year that Foster Williams played. And uh, we were two goals down at uh, three quarter time and kicking against the wind in the last quarter. And uh, if ever the Port Adelaide spirit, if you want to talk about spirit and Port Adelaide, was ever exemplified, it was in that game. That's in 1958. That was the time the goalpost was cut down, was it? Uh, yes, I believe uh, some of the uh, West Adelaide people got a little bit disappointed afterwards and vented their disappointment by uh, getting the axe and slipping into the goalpost, yes. Do you know you cut it down? Uh, I think uh, Ken McGregor still got in his home or part well, of it, on hasn't he? Barbecue at the end. Bob, yeah. getting on to the McGeary medal, who's your tip? I hope Russell Ebert, you know, naturally. It's the same as the Norwood people would hope Mike Taylor or Phil Gallagher, but uh, Russell's a great exponent and uh, we would like to see him win it from our point of view. Bob, you've made a great contribution to football over the year and I'm sure everybody associated with you wishes you well in retirement. Good luck. Thanks. Tim Evans, uh, you've just come off the training track, have you? Yes, Peter, that's right. Uh, about half an hour ago. Hard night? It was a reasonably solid night. Uh, we'll have a hard night tomorrow night and probably finish off with a light uh, run Thursday night to top us off for the game Sunday. Best of luck for Sunday. Um, there's right. a lot of pressure on you. Um, Fred Phillips won the medal as a full forward in, in 1969. And mm. uh, you've, uh, your situation this year has been similar and a lot of people are saying Tim Evans can win it. No, well, I don't give myself any chance. I haven't polled well in the past seasons and uh, I don't think I'll do much better this season, to be quite honest. Well, we'll soon know. Tim, there's been a lot of pressure on you. Uh, firstly, the 100 goals and then the record. Uh, it makes life hard, doesn't it? Oh, yes. There, there was a, a fair amount of pressure uh, approaching the 100 goals. Um, I was certainly glad to get out of the way in one, one day against Torrens there and uh, there is a, a bit of pressure mounting up now you know, when the record uh, is nearer. But... Can you, can you give us a couple of secrets? Who's the, who's the hardest hard fullback you've, you've stood this year? The hardest fullback? Well, they're all hard in their days, but uh, I found Johnny Duckworth very tough with his pace and his um, vigour. Um, well, you don't have to play John in the finals. No, so. but uh, Ian Stasinowski... Um, well, you might come up against him. He's a, he's a very hard man. He plays the ball very hard and fair. And uh, the Glenelg chap, uh, Keith Coleman, he's another good player. He backs his judgment, and uh, if he can't mark, he punches the ball away too. So, you know, this is quite a... A couple of good fullbacks in the uh, in the finals at the moment. And Tim, uh, <coughs> State of Origin series coming up, a, a neck and neck battle between yourself and uh, Roach from Richmond to get the job. I don't think so. Uh, no, I know <laughs> the uh, Victorians going to select the South Australian to play to play in their uh, side. Well, you never know, Tim. Uh, best of luck uh, in the medal count tonight. Uh, you've had a fantastic year, and uh, let's hope you can get that record out of the way quickly uh, on Sunday and get down to play some uh, some serious football. Thanks very much, Peter. 
A man allowed to wander down in uh, Hofner. Hofner, the halfback flanker, has a long kick in towards goals. It's a beautiful kick. And over the top, you won't see a better mark than that. What a beauty. Magnificent mark by Evans. He's booted one so far. And this should certainly be his second. From smack bang in front. Rennie has certainly got his hands full this afternoon. And there it is, another goal. Puts it out for Ebert dropping into an open place. Tim Evans left. That's a miraculous goal for Evans. Evans is looking down ground. That Evans' lead is on. Matt Gaffin works himself into the spot. And Evans has taken the mark. And this could be the record breaker. He shares the record of 15 goals kicked for it with Neil Hawke, who, of course, was a famous footballer come cricketer or cricketer come footballer, whichever way you like. 15 goals to Tim Evans is at 16. A club record has been eclipsed. Tim Evans has got it. Mark Williams it is that picks it up, gives it to Evans, sells the dummy, turns out of trouble, lines up the goal from 35 metres. And there's goal number two to Tim Evans. Cunningham picks it up, looks for Evans, goes across the goal. Look at that. Well, they're certainly giving Evans every opportunity here to get his hundred today, Bob. Team play. He's there to kick the goals. He's there to complete the uh, good forward work of the other Port Adelaide players. And they're giving him every opportunity. I will admit that was a bit of a give me. He had to... Uh, Brian Cunningham had the opportunity to have a shot for himself, but elected to give it to Timmy Evans. Evans kick. 11. It's 99 for the season. On towards Tony Giles. Giles puts it right out the front for Evans to get a clean run at it. He does that. And he's got hands like a vice. Beautiful, strong, one grab. Roberts had no chance whatsoever then. And are we just about to see history being put into the record book? As Tim Evans lines up for the kick. He's done it. He's booted 100. He's the only player in Port Adelaide ever to kick 100 goals. I'm talking now to one of the all-time greats, so far as football coaching is concerned, Jack Odie. Jack, what was the most pleasing part about Sturt's win on Sunday? Natural enough, the win, of course, but uh, the way the young players of the side performed, Ray Wilson and Mark Heinrich and Kimmy Klomp, was really good, and, of course, the way they finished the game in the last few moments. Jack, what was it like to beat one of your pupils in Johnny Halbert? I don't say John was a pupil. He was a great player, but, of course, as I say, it was great to win. Jack, you've been around for many, many years now involved in the coaching uh, field. What about the enthusiasm for the game from your point of, point of view? Well, when you're winning, there's plenty <laughs> of enthusiasm, and I've got plenty of that just at the moment, looking forward to the final series. Jack, looking at the McGeary medal and from Sturt's point of view, who do you think will be the top pollsters? Well, naturally enough, Rick Davies had a very good season again, and uh, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if Neil Craig doesn't poll very well indeed. But as it's been a record year, or record-breaking year in several aspects, who knows, it may be Russell who breaks another record in the McGeary medal side of it. Jack, thanks for your time and good luck for the major round. Thank you, Ken. Lindsay Head, triple McGeary medalist, player turned administrator. Lindsay, how did you find your first season as an administrator? Well, it's very different to uh, a playing career and um, it, it's very demanding and I've spent more time at this probably than I did as a player. And one thing that really bugs me is that we've got to f try to get some form of sensibility into the payment of players and uh, we're going to work to that aim at West Torrens. You must have been disappointed with the final result of the season, your first? Yes, we were terribly disappointed. I, I still haven't got over it as yet. Um, we've got a lot of soul searching to do. Uh, we thought we had a side that was good enough to play in a grand final. Um, Results have shown that we haven't got that side and we've got to do something about it and we're going to do something about it. Lindsay, also you've got uh, coaching problems at the moment. <laughs> have you got any comment to make on that? Well, I don't know whether we've got a coaching problem at the moment really, Ian, because um, uh, as far as I'm concerned, Neil Curley is the coach of West Torrens until, until he tells me that he's not. And that's all I'd like to say on that matter. Lindsay, in terms of your own McGarry medal, you've, uh, you've won three. Do you feel as though that in this day and age, your style of football could still exist? Well, I, I don't know about my style yeah. of football, well, Ian, but I, all I can say is this, that I'd love to be playing today with the... Uh, I know that it's a bit quicker and all that sort of thing, but I'd love to play today with a square situation as it is because you haven't got very many players to get around. 
and you can remember in our day you had a heap of players around the centre bounce. Today you've got uh, three or four players at the most and I think that it would be much easier. You agree with the centre square? Well, I don't know whether I agree with the centre square. I certainly um, uh, think that it would make it easier for a ball player. Fair enough. Lindsay, two McGarry medalists from West Torrens since the war, yourself and Bob Hank. Can you see a third tonight? I can't really, Ian. Um, Kevin McSparren uh, had a bad start to the season but has been very consistent uh, as of late. L uh, Bruce Lindsay has had his troubles, is a great player but I don't think he's played enough good games. And um, Bobby Enright has been a very consistent player for Torrens. Who'll win? Uh, I think Russell Ebert's almost a certainty. Thanks, Lindsay. Dan Moriarty is a champion's champion. He won three McGarry medals for South Adelaide back in the 20s. And Dan, I think everyone knows of your wonderful exploits both with South Adelaide and with the South Australian side. But I spoke to a couple of your contemporaries this week and there was a couple of things that came out that perhaps everyone doesn't know about. We all know you were a champion punter as far as the race horses <laughs> were concerned and that you were one of the few to win a few bob at that game. But what I think a lot of people wouldn't know that you also used to have a punt on your own side when you were playing footy. Tell us about it. That was right. Oh, well, <clears throat> I mainly punted when we played on the Adelaide Oval. The side used to, uh, we weren't a very big side and where you could spread the game out, we used to win quite a number of matches there. I used to always want to get on. Only when you back them? Oh! <laughs> No, they were always trying. Jim Hanby told me that he, you were always very mild-mannered, but he said when the money was on, you used to say to him on the half-back line, don't you let that ball go past. <laughs> Is that true? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I used Jim, uh, the first game Jim played, he played for South in these days, and uh, he was alongside me, and I tried to encourage him a good bit that day, you know, talking to him. He turned out a great... Player. Fine. And finally, I believe too that uh, you were always very, as I said, mild-mannered, but on one occasion you did take exception to something <coughs> that a barrack has said to you. Just tell us about that quickly. Yes, well he called me something that no one could let go and I just grabbed him by the wrist. I said, what did you say? And he, he repeated it and I didn't know what to do. I said, well come around here. And he walked around and when I got around the crowd followed, I thought, what am I going to do now? And with that, our door opened and I saw come over here and when we got in I thought what can I do now and I saw the showers so I put him under that <laughs> and they tell me that was very much like unlike Dan Moriarty in those <laughs> days Dan great to have you here tonight you are one of the immortals of the game thank you very much Max you're certainly one of the greats there of Australian rules football Dan Moriarty and Dan it's great to have you along this evening and we trust you have a most enjoyable time, Dan Moriarty. Well, there are no two ways about it. The standard of junior football here in South Australia at the moment is magnificent. We've proven that by our performances in the Till Cup over the past three years. And let's hope those junior champions of today can in fact go on to bigger and better things in their football future. Presenting the medals to our junior champions of today and our senior champions of tomorrow, we certainly hope so, the Senior Vice President of the South Australian National Football League, Mr Ray Kutcher. Firstly, the McCullum medal for the under-17s, fairest and most brilliant, is from Norwood, Greg Thomas. In 1978, Greg played for the Red Legs under-15s. Presently a wingman, he is top goalscorer for the club. Norwood under-17s vice-captain, Greg Thomas. Greg, congratulations, and prior to the country, to give yourself any chance of winning the medal? Oh, not really. I didn't think I had a show at all. Actually, I thought the um, medal was held the week before, the count, so it was a surprise when I got the phone call. And, uh, oh, I was very happy, but it was a bit of a shock, really. Greg, you've played centre wing for most of the year. Is that your favourite position? I've played all my football on the centre wing with Norwood so far, but I enjoy the run in the centre, and I like roving. It's not bad, but... Wing's pretty good. <laughs> Any league footballer that you're sort of modelling your, your game on, Greg, at all? Not really. I've always just played the game how it best suits me. But 
now I've got the opportunity to try to follow in the footsteps of blokes like Neil Craig and Greg Turbull and Michael Gregg who've won the medal before me from Nord. So if I'm ever half as good as those blokes, I'll be quite happy. Good boy, fantastic. Greg, of course, uh, you've got the grand final coming up. You had a two-point victory at the weekend. Now, how confident are you of winning the grand final? Well, it's been a hard road there, but we're there now. And it's going to be tough, but if we can win it, it'll be great. Greg, your medal tip for the 1980 McGee medal? Well, I think Michael Taylor's got a great show this year, but I'd be very happy if Phil Gallagher got up. Fabulous. Now, just talking about... Did you have any thoughts about playing for the Tigers? Did you speak to Harry Kernan or anyone from down the bays at all? Oh, I was pressured there at one stage. I went to Brighton High for two years, and uh, Des State, who's yes. currently uh, coaching or assisting the coaching of the under-19s, he uh, had a few words to me. Duncan, now, I believe you started your football career with the under-12s at Panola. How did that all come about? Well, my father got shifted down there in work. He's currently working in the ANZ Bank. Right. Uh, you also got three brothers. Are they talented in the football world as well? Oh, well, I've got a younger brother, Simon, who's playing the under-17s at the moment. And my older brother, Craig, who did play for Nord in the reserves in that a few years ago. Right. Now, the most interesting part about Nord's performance, of course, in the under-19s, you're also into the grand final. I believe that Port Adelaide, on the two previous occasions this year that you've met, beat you. Now, of course, on Saturday, you won by 98 points. How did that happen? Well, I think it was a good team effort. Uh, we all put our minds together and uh, we showed them just what it was about. Right, and, and then finally, who's your medal tip? Oh, I think Michael Taylor. Yeah. Michael Taylor. Yeah. Another Norwood supporter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Duncan, congratulations once again. Let's hope this is the start of many bigger things to come for your football career. Thanks very much, Ken. Duncan Fosdyke, thank you. The league's reserves McGarry medal went to West Adelaide Rover, Leon Grosser. The 22-year-old Rover from the Wolves has played 24 league games. In 1977, he won the Tompkins medal for the under-19s, fairest and most brilliant. Leon, you're making a habit of winning medals. You won the 1977 Tompkins medal, now the league reserves. Uh, it must be uh, uh, a habit of yours. Yeah, you only one to go now, so... Uh, <laughs> <see where I'm> <laughs> Just talking about your win this year, Leon, uh, remarkable. You only played something like 10 reserves game. Yeah, I had a few injuries uh, during the season. Uh, it didn't help me much, but uh, I'll take it as they come. Were you surprised that in that 10 <coughs> games you polled eight first preference votes? Yeah, it's a good surprise, actually. Uh, yeah, I didn't want it at all. That was real good. Now, what about your injuries? Just come a bit closer. You're a bit nervous, yeah. eh? Oh, <laughs> well, that makes two of us. Yeah. Now, what about your injuries? They've obviously hampered your league career. Yeah, well, I started here, yeah, missed uh, uh, six, about six through a hamstring, then four with a groin. Just I uh, kept on coming back too early all the time. Uh, that's about all, so I should be right for next year. Right. Now, what about your ambitions so far as your football career is concerned? Oh, just to play with West, you know. I just want to play on the side. And I haven't got a premiership yet, which is something... Uh, I suppose everyone looks forward to. So with uh, a bit of luck next year or something. Well, Leon, talking about premierships, of course, the West Adelaide Reserves are in there and punching at the moment. Their performance on Sunday disappointing? Yeah, a bit dark. Uh, <laughs> so it wasn't real grouse, so uh, she wasn't very happy either. Uh, <laughs> That's how it's shoe out, is it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll come back. Right, now, finally, a tip for the medal. Uh, well, everyone's bagging for their own club, so I'd say Borch myself, uh, yeah. with a bit of luck. Ian Borch out. And if he doesn't get up, I'd say Michael Taylor. Leon Grosser, congratulations once again on a fine performance and let's hope you, in fact, too, can uh, realise your ambitions. Leon Grosser. <laughs> we'll come back in one moment's time with the sad moments of season 1980. the saddest moments on any sporting arena is when a champion decides to hang up his boots. Barry, I must uh, imagine that it would have been a, a very, very difficult decision to, uh, to give up the coaching job at North Adelaide. Uh, it was, Peter, but I think for the, 
for the benefit of the club, uh, the decision had to be made. Uh, and I've said before that I think we need new direction and new, new leadership out there with some new ideas because we are a good side and uh, I hope that, that that evidence is there next year. Barry, are you going to uh, stay involved with football or, or in particular with North Adelaide? Yes, I will, because football's been a major part of my life for such a long time that I, I just couldn't cut it off uh, without remaining involved in some capacity out there. Well, that's great to hear. Barry, um, just a couple of questions that uh, you may not have been asked before. Who's the best footballer that you've seen in South Australia since you've been playing? Uh, I guess there are many, Peter, and it probably depends when you say footballer. Perhaps you've got to look at position players, uh, probably for all-round ability, um, probably Russell Ebert, uh, and I've always regarded Robert Day as a very good player as well, so I would perhaps put those two. Uh, and of course I always idolise Don Lindner, uh, so perhaps we could put those three on, on the top line. Why not? Well, what about a as an opponent? Who's the hardest opponent you've ever had? I always found Wayne Phyllis of Glenelg a very <laughs> difficult player to play against, probably because he was a very strong player, but he also had mobility as well, and, and I found him very difficult. Interesting comments. Barry, any regrets at all in your career? No, th there hasn't been. I've always enjoyed playing. Uh, I, I finished up with, with a couple of hundred games and I enjoyed every one of them. Those injuries, you think you'll be able to bear them for the rest of your life with, uh, without too much trouble? Well, I've had a lot of enjoyment uh, and perhaps you've got to get a couple of disappointments, but no, no regrets at all. Thanks very much, Barry. Well, Barry Robin mastered all the skills in football, but none better than great high marks like these. Bob Hammond now, been a good player for North Adelaide in that last line of defence. Kicks to half back. Oh! Now we'll see that tomorrow on the edited highlights. Robin has hit the grandstand roof as he marks. Easily got round C Camp. Well shepherded too by our teammate. Oh. Robin's kick to Sacks on the lead. And Sacks, no trouble at all to take it. Argument there's a beautiful lead. All good, good punch away by Nelson. Nelson it was, and it's taken away here by Robin. Robin's left footed kick is a beauty hit. Drives it towards centre half. Oh, look at that classical Barry Robert. All the brilliance yeah. of the champion. Towards the centre of the ground. Pack forming Walker slide from behind Till. Can't hold the mark to Barry Robin. A lovely handball to North Adelaide player out there. Giving the North Adelaide player the run of the ball into towards full forward. Recovers well to Finneman. He's met very heavily and fairly by Barry Robin. Already going across the ground to Barry Robin. And Barry Robin marking it centre half forward. For North Adelaide some 60 to 70 metres from goal. Yes, I, I think uh, five or six years ago, can he kick these? I'm just wondering whether he's still got the length in his kicking. Robin with the ball now. Normally a great kick, as Peter Marcus said, the drop punt on its way. The accuracy there. So is the length of magnificent kick. That's his 11th kicking, second goal. Miles with the kick up towards the half forward line. Carl, Robin up high. What a great quarter this player is having. Robin with the mark now on the half forward line. 15 metre penalty kick being imposed and Barry Robin now going for his 14th kick on the half forward line pack forming in the goal square Robin will put the ball right into the teeth of goals Robin now spiral punt kicks on its way it's a magnificent kick off the boot Wayne Stringer coming in again sorry it's Tiller Tiller with the ball back to Robin Robin in towards the attacking area and a magnificent disposal of the ball. That's football at its best. Magnificent stuff, Robin. There was a true champion in action. To you, Barry Robin, from all South Australians, we sincerely thank you. This season has thrilled all football supporters with the great goals, the hard bumps, the long kicking, the fierce tackling and the high marking. And Peter Hoffner, the half-back flanker for Port Adelaide, kicks it straight back in towards the centre position again. David Grazer, a beautiful mark. Gorchard to Tate. Oh, what a mark! Hop back! Swings it back towards centre half forward. One hand and again! He's done it again! Towering kick to the square. Two men here, it's Evans versus Armour, Cunningham off the pet, is that a miraculous goal? It is! Dunlop should get the ball towards the line, it's going to go awfully close. Congestion, Murette got the hand pass out, that was clever football, and a snap there by Jeff Berry, puts up another one. Puts it in the air, screwing back towards goal, setting himself, 
fisted away, off the fingers, winding his way through. And gets a magnificent goal! Takes front position and just drops the mark. And recovers beautifully to Folletti. Now to Belton. Ebert still on the run, on the left foot. This looks mighty good from Russell Ebert. Yes, it's a goal. It's a little Reckner now gets the ball to Hamilton, shrugs the tackle, fries there. Upsets the kick from Hamilton, but here's the chance now for Donaldson. Donaldson swoops on the ball, picks it up in the square on his own. Tate, the handball, the board chart, goal number 13. Throws the handball out quickly. The Nilg making mistakes up forward. This time it's Walter with the chance to put the ball deep into attack. The kick's on its way. Oh, a magnificent goal by Ronnie Walter. Walker McClay, there's Wilbur Wilson again. Sharks it, has a shot at the goal. Towards Smith, he's going to get a big leap. Great mark! Four goals in the first quarter, but hardly sighted since then. The half forward line, oh, Greg Phillips! Steadies, McBurren goes back. Oh, beautiful mark, Kevin McBurren! Philetic goes through the pack, pace by Philetic now as he kicks them along the full forward. Evans is there, Galt came up and knocked it forward. The chance over there for Williams. Williams in the pocket, screws one over his shoulder. He's got it! What a magnificent goal by Stephen Williams! That's great play, the handball towards 12, number 12 is brilliant, Bruce Abernathy, he's run 30 metres and he's kicked it 60 metres and he's kicked a goal. Shovels it out wide towards Nicholson, almost went to kick it off the ground and then held his boot but it's been picked up by Abernathy from a long way from goal and it's a great goal. Too far out to score I would think, oh the kick's a mammoth one, gee that's a great kick, it's going to be awfully close and off the, what's the result? It's a goal! Taps it out, but it's Corn, the running player to Corwell. Corn takes it off for of Corwell, a towering drop punt in the goal. A magnificent goal. Gallagher's 50 metres from goal on a 45 degree angle. Norwood kicking with the aid of a slight breeze today. That's a beautiful kick from Gallagher. It's a magnificent kick. It's a goal. Centre wing. Beautiful mark taken by Phillips. What a superb mark. Central Districts are in trouble. What a mark! What a beautiful mark! Booms it towards half forward and there's a brilliant mark. Mark Norsworth. 11,673 people here at Football Park this afternoon. Corns, what a mark! What a beauty! Over the years you've seen Graham Corns take mark after mark like that. And it's taken once again by Grager. David Grager is playing very well this afternoon. Hand pass to Aegis. Aegis back to Abernethy. All the balance and skill and style of a veteran as it goes towards centre half forward. Brilliantly there by Nat. Cunningham gets the goal and it's another one. Out comes Cox, tried to half volley it but couldn't control it. Thomas the opportunity. Great handball to Gallagher, to Menzel. Around Keeney goes. He's got Hoffman loose in the pocket. Hoffman. The handball to uh, Adler, Adler from 20 metres is another one, another one to Nord. Hooks round the corner but into the mark, in goes Graham, Graham slips it out again, Heinrich, dummies, turns, back to Graham, into the open goal and that's a giddy goal. Davies taps it cleverly down to Heinrich, Bagshaw, McGarry, over to Graham, here's a chance to get number two, pops it away at goal, he's going to get the free kick in any case but he's put it down up at two. Medic, also Stevenson. Coming through the pack is Mark Williams, using the body well, under ages. He taps it on, Daryl Cale chipping in, does it cleverly through the pack, if it'll bounce for him, in towards goal. Oh, what's he done? A magnificent goal to Daryl Cale. Oh, it was a collision between the umpire and Stephen Slifford, but a magnificent goal to Daryl Cale. Phillips, who can kick just as well left foot as he can right, down to Evans. Clifford kicks it off the ground, and I think he's got another one. A magnificent goal there to Stephen Clifford. Graham Corns now kicks across to the wing and Marshall from behind a magnificent mark, David Marshall. Gives it to Painter. Painter with his left foot snap from 45 metres. It's into the square from behind. Oh, what a magnificent mark. That is certainly making sure that it's not Torrens Day. Hardeman, what a mark. Hamill to Giles. Giles now towards half forward. Hardeman. A short kick from Bolton towards Philetic, half volleyed. Now swings to the left foot. He couldn't possibly kick this goal, could he? No, he doesn't. It goes across the face of goal, looking for Aegis. Ross Aegis swoops on the ball, throws it in front, evades two players. Now has a check side shot for goal. Oh, that's got to be the best goal that you've ever seen in a day's walk. 
around the corner. Caldwell and he hasn't he played well. Bolts off towards goal. Gives it a hell of a boot. And this is going to be awful. Oh, what a magnificent goal. Looks for copping. He's got it. He'll need it as well. Weston on the boundary line. Hooks with his left foot. Don't tell me that's a goal. I don't believe it. Oh, what a magnificent goal. You'll never see better if you live to be 100. <gasps> Comments there for me and Dave. There are some of the things that make our game so great. In one moment's time, we'll come back and talk to the people who choose the McGee medal, the men in white. We're viewing the 1980 McGarry medal count through Channel 9 Adelaide on relay to RTS 5A in Loxton. The McGarry medal was introduced in 1898, which incidentally was won by Norwood's Albie Green. The medal was donated by a solicitor by the name of William McGarry, and that certainly would make our erstwhile president here tonight very, very happy, Mr Bashir being a solicitor himself. While chairman, he sought to raise the prestige of umpires by introducing harsh measures against players reported for rough tactics. Mr McGarry insisted that umpires should choose the fairest and most brilliant players in order that they gain additional respect. And speaking from a former umpire's point of view, I think that's magnificent. This year, <laughs> this year we saw three umpires achieve milestones. Firstly, 200 plus men in white, Peter Mead and Bobby Schofield. And in July of this year, Des Foster umpired his 250th league game. Des Foster, would you like to join me on stage? <laughs> Des commenced his umpiring career 16 years ago and has umpired 15 interstate games, 11 national football games and two grand finals. Come forward, Des. Des, congratulations, 250 league games. What's your next ambition? I think I'd have to look forward to uh, next week more than anything, Ken. Uh, as you well know, um, having been involved, um, uh, finals time is very tense um, and a torrid situation. And really, I think we've got a tremendous bunch of fellows at the moment uh, vying for the positions uh, in these finals. And I think we should acknowledge uh, tonight John Hilton's effort on Saturday, uh, Sunday, sorry, for a guy that's only uh, been involved in umpiring for a short time and uh, doing so well on Sunday, I think umpiring is in good hands when the Meads and the Schofields give it away. <laughs> but Des, surely you'd like to umpire 300 league games. That would be a, a great achievement. As I said, I'm only worried about the next few weeks. Um, I'm only a year by year proposition now. When one gets to 21 plus um, <laughs> in years, you, you know, you've got to think about uh, the future. But no, I, I hope that I've got another 12 months uh, commitment in me and uh, I hope that I can do uh, you know, some good for the game. Des, what about your enthusiasm? 16 years of umpiring, you've covered a lot of ground. Do you lose your enthusiasm at times? No, I think at the moment, uh, and certainly this year, it's, um, my enthusiasm's been probably at a peak, I think. Um, having to um, put up with the pressure of the, uh, the opposition that's there. And uh, as I say, when you look at the, the end two tables uh, and see some of the youth that's coming through and umpiring, it's certainly keeping um, the old fellas on their toes. Mm. Des, would you like to clarify a rumour that's been going about Adelaide now for, for quite some time? What's the story about yourself being caught in the shower of fellow umpire Peter Mead? Now, that's a long story. I don't know whether oh, we but should... that's a long story. <laughs> we should cover it. Uh, <laughs> well, Peter no. Mead's up there. Perhaps you should get Pete to answer that one for you. <laughs> no, Peter and I uh, did a fair bit of uh, pre-season training down at West Beach um, early in the year, or early, late last year, sorry. And uh, we used to have a few Wheaties and Nabisco Wheaties uh, in the morning after a shower. Mm, I see. Well, Des, uh, finally, would you like to whisper to me who your medal tip is? Well, I now know who's won the McGarry Medal of 1980. Gentlemen, Des Foster. Certainly the life of a coach is one of frustration. When things go bad, they really go bad. When they go well, of course, he's on top of the world. But of course, that's what makes football such a great game, particularly Aussie rules. We 
weekend's all laid out. Could it be it's Aussie nature to join Hunter the race? gets it over the hut, draws it, Darmody. Oh, beautiful blind turn by Darmody. Back it goes to close. Close best on ground, has a shot at the goals. Nice to see some of the coaches smiling, all except Kills, that is. You're viewing the 1980 McGarry Medal presentation on Channel 9.
Welcome back to the 1980 McGarry Medal presentation. This year brings a new concept of the count by Wang Computer. As Mr Bashir calls the player's name, you will see on your screen the club name, the top three pollsters and also the player who just polled three votes. Already the third and second preferences have been counted. Now let's look at the top eight from each club. Firstly, Central Districts. On top, joint leaders there, Peter Jonas and Billy Cochran. Dean Mobbs, their captain on six. On five points, Cowie and Norsworthy. So the, the voting there for the, for the dogs, a little bit quiet at this stage. But on top, super dog, Peter Jonas. Off hands by Norsworthy, the kick now towards half forward. Up high, Jonas. Oh, great mark by the long-haired super dog. That's the form we've come to know of Peter Jonas. Early in this game, he couldn't find the ball, but on that occasion, he showed all the skills and all the promise that he's shown up to this stage of his career, and he gets an opportunity from just 30 metres out. The kick from Jonas is a drop punt. It's up in the air. I think he's put it through. He has a handball. Smith, the try, tackled beautifully by Jonas, and Jonas is having exerting quite an influence on this game, Bob Hammond. Down towards the full forward position. An attempted mark, picked up by Jonas. The kick is through, and Central Districts come charging back. That's Jonas' third. Stone towards full forward. Jonas! Strong mark. And of course, this becomes the most important kick that he's had today. Been a good player for Central's. Down early in the first half, but lifted dramatically in the second. I think he's got it. Jonas from 50 metres has popped it through and there's only five points of difference. Down towards an R forward, Sanders comes across from the double blue. Back heavily by Jonas. Great football by Jonas. Great strong football by Jonas. Hip and shoulder, beautiful play. Push Sanders right off the line of the ball. A different story from the Tigers. Three players there polling extremely well. Kim Hodgman on top with 20, in front of Paul Weston on 19, and Graham Corns on 11. The most surprising thing about the voting for the Tigers, Peter Carey, only polling six votes to this time, but the leader there, Kimmy Hodgman. Weston gets the benefit of the bounce now, sets up the short pass, Hodgman at the half forward line takes it, no pressure put on him, heads towards goal, puts it in the air, gives it a chance, I think it's home! A goal to Kim Hodgman. It's Carey gets the tap cleverly to Hodgman, 12-3. The running player back there was Weston. Hodgman again on the half forward line. He's on the left leg. He goes in long towards full forward. This is going to be very close. What a goal! Well clear, can straighten up. Short is McVicker. He's going in long towards full forward. Hodgman at the back of the pack. And I think he's pulled it down. What a sensational mark from the little fellow. There is Copping. Can't handle it. Sorrell as well. Tries to run the ball clear. Gives a chance to Bucky Cunningham. He's gone for holding the ball. Standing flat-footed. Well played, Hodgman, right on his hammer, and he's got the free kick 40 metres out in front. Yeah, what a brilliant tackle from Kim Hodgman. Uh, uh, Cunningham's not an easy man to tackle. He's very, very cagey, just like Kim Hodgman, but Hodgie did it well. Trying to get onto his left boot, runs his full 15 metres, goes short. Oh, and a very courageous mark by Hodgman. Takes the mark, only 30 metres from goal. Great mark there by Hodgman. The Port Adelaide player coming face on towards him, but Hodgman didn't shirk the issue. Never seen you look so good, Hodgie. Yeah. 20 votes. Uh, you've got a couple of friends there, though. Paul Weston, 19. Graham Corns, 11. Uh, is the inevitable going to happen? I, I think it could, uh, Pete. Um, I, think, I, I still think Paul Weston's had a very consistent year, and I think he's got a, a lot of votes to get yet. Um, but when you look at it, uh, Russell Ebert's got 22, and uh, um, Michael Taylor's got a few votes too. So uh, the, the, the favourites have got a lot of votes, so I think it could be a very close count. I think it might be. Who's your tip? I still think Russell Ebert will win it, and Russell I Ebert. do hope Paul Weston does too. Just before we let you go, what happened yesterday? Um, I think it was in the lap of the gods. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> the wind. <laughs> Thanks very much, Kim. Thank you. Thank you there to Peter Marker, looking now at the Roosters, with Trevor Hill on 10, Mickey Noonan and Greg McAdam on 8, Barry Stringer on 6. So once again, from North Adelaide's point of view there, voting very, very low at this stage, being headed by Trevor Hill. Turning now to the Red Legs, and a different story there. Before we go to the Redlegs, shall I say, let's have a look at their top player in action, Trevor Hill. It does now, across. The Roosters going forward. Hardiman. Oh, clever play, Trevor Hill. Looks out ground, finds a teammate. 
Galing has a shot at the goals, and they bring up their first. North Adelaide, however, the opportunity now, as Riley, well down, gets a left foot kick in towards Dosner. It comes off his boot towards Hill. Will the mark be paid? No, it's play on. Hill trying to get around Sanders. Has Galing going past, cleverly avoids him, switch towards goal. Hoken recovers well, pushes it on, Dunstan, also Trevor Hill. Trevor Hill does it well, breaks away with sheer pace, up towards full forward. Up hands as it touched the hand through the wide open goal. And what's happened? Oh, magnificent goal by Trevor Hill. He wobbles one up towards that player. It's an awkward looking kick. The back of the pack was noble. Slide, nowhere to go. Throws it out to Hill. Hill will need backup support. Hook around the corner and he's bundled the goal. Trevor Hill's fourth goal and what a ripper. North Adelaide into attack again through Stringer. That's a towering torpedo punt up towards full forward. Lay fists away. Shot away towards goal, and I think it's Daly for Hill. The goal! That's his fifth goal, Trevor Hill, and what a magnificent goal. Looking at the voting for Norwood, and two players dominating the count there so far, Michael Taylor on 18, Philip Gallagher on 15, two players on seven, Michael Ace and Greg Turbill. Of course, Greg Turbill not eligible to win the medal, Woodcock and Jenkins both on five, but the leader there, Michael Taylor on 18, but a gentleman who's had a fantastic year in the centre for the Red Legs, Philip Gallagher. Nat. Nat in there again. Chance now for Gallagher. Picks it up beautifully on the run. Lines up the goals. The kick looks fairly good off the boot. It's very good. It's a goal to Phil Gallagher. His first. Robin can't complete the mark. In there is Miles. Pushes the ball on to Woodcock. Back to Gallagher. Here's trouble for North Adelaide. Gallagher with a kick away. It's a great hit. Right through the middle by Gallagher. Woodcock with the opportunity, sets it up for Dunstan, tries towards goal. Gallagher, can he get it? Gets it back, hooks it in towards goal. I think they've got out of it. Oh, almost made a mess of it. He treated it like a hot brick, but popped it through for his first goal. Back in the centre again, it's Davies to Cray, but intercepted beautifully by Gallagher. Kick towards the full forward area. Here's the chance for Hoffman. Goal number three. Goes short across the ground to Gallagher. Plays on quickly in towards goal. The kick's on its way. Oh, I think he's popped it through. But Gallagher's dropping down the left half forward flank on his own. Takes the mark. Danger man for South Adelaide, Philip Gallagher. Plays the attacking role extremely well, and that was no exception. Gallagher's 50 metres from goal on a 45-degree angle. Norwood kicking with the aid of slight breeze today. That's a beautiful kick from Gallagher. It's a magnificent kick. It's a goal. Phil, you've had a, really a magnificent year and uh, so much so that Big Bob McLean over there is trying to get you to sit on the port table. Oh, I'm a bit too old for them, I think. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> Phil, um, a lot of people say that you've, uh, that you've added aggression to your game. Uh, what is, what, what, what's your comment on that? Oh, I, I really don't think that's a valid comment. Um, I've been quite happy with my form over the years. I think probably this year I've had a bit more added responsibility. Uh, Neil's played me in the centre, which is something that I've wanted to do for a long time, and uh, I've probably played a lot better this year. I agree, but I don't think uh, aggression's really come into it. Yeah, I saw a couple of things uh, during the year that, uh, that suggest that you're going in a lot harder, playing, playing the game harder than I've seen you in previous years. Oh, I know. You probably <laughs> just haven't seen them before, Peter, that's all. <laughs> Possibly. Um, Mike Taylor is, uh, is a favourite with a lot of people. Um, how do you see uh, his chances this year? Well, he's definitely been the best player in our club this year and as far as I'm concerned, he's a very worthy winner. Well, that's from the, uh, the horse's mouth, Phil Gallagher. Best of luck in the count yourself, Phil. Oh, well, I just hope Michael wins it. Phil Gallagher certainly had a tremendous year. Looking at the Magpies, Russell Ebert, the favourite for the 1980 McGarry medal on top with 22 votes, followed by Brian Cunningham on 13, Abernethy on 10, Clifford 9, and Greg Phillips on eight. So Russell Ebert at this uh, moment certainly dominating the count so far as Port Adelaide is concerned. But a player who's had a tremendous year at centre half back is Greg Phillips. Over now to Gillies. Four goals in the first quarter, but hardly sighted since then. And the half forward line. Oh, Greg Phillips. What a mark. It was unbelievable. He was a half a metre underneath that ball. What's it in replay? Oh, what a mark. Now towards the centre, full forward position. Granger from behind, fists it away. McGarry. A beautiful tackle. Finally, it's taken away down the outer side there by Vivian, who kicks long to the half forward line. Phillips up. Great mark. Casey now from the half back flank. 
Set away. Beautiful mark taken by Phillips. What a superb mark. That's the form that's made him the best centre half back in South Australia, if not Australia at this day. Will the ball sit for him? It has. Support comes from Howard again. Well tackled, however. Brilliant tackle by Phillips. And Porter out of trouble. 18 minutes into the final term. Sorrell with the kickoff. A great mark. Now goes high towards centre wing. Inglis is there. Phillips from behind. Great mark, Rick Phillips. Russell, you're, uh, you're leading the count again. 22 votes. Yeah. Get them too early, I suppose. How does it feel? Oh, uh, all right. Yeah. No player, uh, we're, we're saying the obvious, no player's ever won four. Uh, you, you're possibly going to do something that nobody has ever done before. Oh, well, there's always got to be a first time. If it's there, it's there. If it's not, life goes on. Has the... Uh, <laughs> you're quite right there. Has the, uh, the year at North Melbourne uh, done anything for your game? Has it improved it? Yes, I, it's done uh, more than anyone could possibly imagine. Uh, to be over there and involved uh, with a club like North Melbourne are, uh, to be playing with the best, against the best. It's just an experience that uh, I hope a lot of lads here, uh, and probably the administrators don't, but I'd, I'd love to see them. A few of the young fellas go over there for a couple of years and you just see the improvement in the game. A lot of players sit back here content uh, with being up amongst the top, but once you're exposed to people who are um, as good and better than you are, you just realise how much more you can do. That's a good comment, Russell. Uh, I think you've picked your partner, Paul Weston, as, uh, as your tip in the medal. Yeah, my word. Keep it in the business. You reckon he's a good player? <laughs> he's a great player, <laughs> yes. Thanks, Russell. All the best in the count, and uh, if you do make it four, I'm sure that, uh, that the whole of the South Australian public are going to applaud you in it. If it's there, it's there. <laughs> Russell Ebert, there are a man of few words. Looking at South Adelaide's situation so far as the voting is concerned, Baines, Jeff Baines, their captain, on top with 11, Naley on 9, we have White on 7, Linky and Slattery, Slattery should I say, on 6, Haightley on 4. So the voting at this uh, particular stage being dominated by South Adelaide's captain, Jeff Baines, who's had a tremendous year. Let's look at him in action. Stepping around White, Dunstan's kick now towards half forward right, and it's taken here by Baines. Captain for South Adelaide. The thump on to Baines. What a great game he's played. Jeff Baines for his side. Picked up by Palmer. Stewie Palmer, 200 games plus. Over it goes. Finds his skipper. On that goes to Keane. Keane in danger. Over it goes to Baines again. Baines forward to Linky. Back it goes to Baines. This is a promising move by South Adelaide as Baines kicks. Been a beauty. Baines, how are you? Good, Peter. Yeah. <laughs> I just ran from one side of the room to the other. Yeah, it's it difficult was, work. You're getting unfit. I would say uh, you're a good judge. Uh, you said that uh, your forward player, Linky, would kick 100 goals this year, and he almost did it. The goals uh, weren't quite wide enough at times. <laughs> well, perhaps... He got a lot of them. He got a lot of marks. He could have kicked 100. Perhaps you can have a go at the administrators. You might be able to get them wider apart. Um, what, about, uh, what about the medal? Do, can anyone from South win it? Uh, I don't think so, Peter. This year, we've been a pretty even side. Um, I think last year Andy Bennett was our big chance. Uh, Jeff certainly uh, you know, works very hard in every game he plays in, and uh, he'd be uh, he'd poll very well with us. Um, but I don't I don't can't see uh, anyone on our side winning it. To be quite honest with you. Who's your tip? Uh, Graham Corns, really. Um, I know no one's much talked about Graham very much, but uh, I think Graham, uh, since he's been back from Melbourne, has uh, developed a lot more of his ground play. And uh, to me, uh, you know, he did a lot for his side. I know he's probably up against uh, uh, Paul and uh, bit of opposition. Yeah, right? but. Uh, he might just sneak in. Well, you're not a bad, you're not a bad judge, Vance. You're not a bad judge. Well, I've got no inside information, I can tell you that. <laughs> hey, one thing you must tell us before we go, uh, who are you going to coach next year? Well, you've, got, you've, got to tell, you've got to tell the truth. It's still in the air. This is, now, I think everybody <laughs> wants to hear about the McGeary medal tonight. Well, give us a um, quick one. No, I'll be, uh, I'll be settling still back with uh, South Adelaide. That's tremendous. Thanks, Vance. They're a good lot of blokes. Have a look at them. Yeah, they're be good looking blokes, too. <laughs> Thanks, Vance. Right up there. I took that as Hayden Bunton coaching South Adelaide next year, so South Adelaide Porters will certainly be very, very happy tonight. Looking at Sturt's point of view and the voting there. <laughs> Thanks, Bunch. Neil Craig on top with 18, Rick Davies 17. Those two players dominating the count so far as the Double Blues are concerned. Fry on eight, Hardiman and Bagshaw on seven, but certainly the former Norwood player, Neil Craig, has been in great form this year. In comes Eddie Fry, he overruns the ball, finally it's Neil Craig, back turned beautifully, up towards full four, it's a lovely kick, up there is Hargraves, off hands, was the ball touched, Sturt first, he's topped it through. Heinrichs now for Sturt, gets the opportunity to Craig, 
Craig gets around, gets onto his left foot, steadies. That's good football. On to Davies. Sturt, finally. Well played, Kim Smith, to Craig. Neil Craig looking for Heinrich in the pocket. And he's beautiful, beautiful Mark. Little Wilson has no chance against the tie. Dexter Kennedy has. Short. Hamilton's his man. Beautifully done, Craig. To the outer side. Oh, Davies pushed under it this time. Sanders wants to claim the mark. Puts it out to Bagshaw. Bagshaw to Craig. 40 metres out. Heads for home. Puts it in the air. Gives it a chance. And Trevor Zim watches it go through. Davies. And Spill, who's done a magnificent job in this first quarter, Spill. Davies with a clever tap on this occasion to Craig, the running player, in towards goal. That looks great off the boot. Here's the middle. That's Craig's first goal. From West Adelaide's point of view, three players are in front here in the count. Dexter Kennedy, Ian Borchard and Richard Hamilton, all on eight points each. Then two players on four, Summerton and Anderson, Filkey, Morris and Drew, all on three. But three players there, Kennedy, Borchard and Hamilton, are dominating the count. And there's been no finer player for the Wolves this year than Ian Borchardt, who certainly played very, very well. Sweeps his foot right through the ball. And another mark, perfectly judged by Borchardt. Towards Kennedy and Sims. Murette takes the ball. Clever football to my Murette. Borchardt, sold the dummy and keeps running. Tucks it under his arm. Oh, still keeps running. Well done, Ian Borchardt. Gets onto the left leg, hooks in towards full forward. Borchardt. Plays on quickly, point black range. What's the result? It's a goal. Fulting will put the Wolves well into attack. Luders, Phil Brooksby behind with Stewie Palmer. Off the pack, Borchardt with another chance for West Adelaide. Hooks it back and pops it through. That's his second goal. But it's over the top of the pack and Donaldson accepts the mark. Plays on quickly. Has Borchardt loose, only 20 metres from goal. And Borchardt under the ball on that occasion. Stood his ground well with players converging and accepted the mark. Ken, that is a courageous mark. Yeah, I was going to make the same comment, in. and uh, how strong is Borchardt? Two players bearing down on him, and he took it uh, almost easily. The kick's on its way. I think he's put it through again. He certainly has. Kick number five for Borchardt. His first goal, and West Adelaide boot away. Bruce. Will the medal winner come from West Torrens? That's the all-important question, and two players have certainly dominated the count there. Bruce Lindsay on 13, and Kevin McSparren on 11. Five is Cousins and also Rocky Roberts. But the player dominating the count there for West Torrens is Bruce Lindsay. Mano can't get to it. Marriott can. Good play over to Mano. On to McSporran. This is excellent play to Lindsay. Lindsay has a look at the goals. Has a shot. And it's a goal. It's West Torrens. Jackman there. Can't control the ball. Lahoo's in there. Good handball over to Durkin. Is over his head. He comes in. off the ground. Shuffle wants to score. Oh, great goal by Bruce Lindsay. Down towards David Granger. The chance now for Bruce Lindsay. Lindsay kicks long, and it is long, and it is straight, and it brings up West Torrens. 11th goal. In the centre, it's Nat taken by Lindsay. Lindsay with a sudden burst has really come into the play, and look at that pass from Lindsay. It's a beautiful one. He's been around West Torrens a long time as Aldo, and he's been a tremendous clubman and a tremendous footballer. On it goes to Lindsay. Lindsay steadies, has a kick. Oh, I think it's come back. In motion. Hill's kick directed at Davies. Lindsay! Oh, what a mark. Went up like a Roman candle and pulled down a screaming mark. Nicholson. Turbull. Strong tackle. Given no opportunity whatsoever to get rid of the ball. Great tackle. Pushing Doug Cox to the grandstand side. The ball sits up in the breeze. Oh, Lindsay! Bruce Lindsay over the top, a magnificent mark. I bet you wish you could do it at the moment, Bruce. Yeah, it's been a bit short and, uh, you know, I haven't, haven't caught one of those for a while. You're in the wars. Um, you're a bit like your captain up there, Neville Roberts. You, uh, you can't seem to escape injury. No, that's right. Uh, I think it's a bit of bad influence, that's about all. <laughs> bad influence <laughs> from the captain. Oh, well. Um, what about West Torrens? Can, a, can any West Torrens player get up, do you think? Oh, I don't think so. I think... Uh, you know, the, we've sort of been, like South Adelaide, we've been very consistent. You know, we haven't uh, won our games on uh, spectacular players. All our games have been won on uh, team players. And, uh, you know, I think it'll come from the, one of the big three, you know, Weston, Taylor, those sort of... Ebert, Weston, of course. Taylor, Ebert. Hodgman. Yeah, yeah they're, they're, and Hodgman. It'll come from those four, I think. No West Torrens players? No, I don't think so. There's a lot of people that think that you'll poll very well, though, Bruce. You, you have had a magnificent season, apart from uh, the odd injury. <laughs> the odd injury, yeah. Uh, um, well, you know, it, 
if, if I get a few votes, well, I'll be happy. That's about all, you know. I think Kevin will take uh, a fair few more than me, but uh, you know, if I get a few, well, I'll be happy. Well, look after yourself over the summer, Bruce, and uh, make sure you're in one piece before the season yeah, starts next got year. Got no choice now. <laughs> Good on Thanks, Thanks, Bruce. Thank you. Thank you to Peter. Looking at the Woodville side, close on eight, Sewer six. Their half forward flanker, Centerman Ralphie Sewer, the favourite from that club to, uh, to win the medal. Heaven on five, Hansel and Parker on four. But the man who will dominate the count from the Woodpeckers is Ralph Sewer. Carty from behind, Sewer. Sewer turns to the left foot now. Then he's the shot from goal. It's a goal. It's not well directed. Clifford across there. There's Goodingham. Towards the centre position. Sewer, beautiful mark there by Sewer. Schlein takes it out with strength, pushes a hand pass out. Tiller goes in, uh, Clisby it was, it went in hard. Sewer, Sewer breaking clear. Best man on the ground in the third quarter. What a magnificent kick and what a magnificent goal. Kinnear has Eckerman running past, but the ball is not well directed on that occasion. Goodingham almost punched it through the nose of Vince, but Vince recovers oh. and Ralph Sewer with a lot of courage backs in there to take a good strong mark. That's a 57-point lead to Glenelg as Coleman fires another big screw punt. A pie went pain a bit over the top. Ralph Sewer. Vince caught. Sewer on his wrong foot running to the pocket. Enough pace to get clear. Gives it to close. Lifts it back to Sewer. Over the top to Ewan in the square. And goal number three. Great play there by Ralph Sewer. Let's now look at the overall top eight as it stands at the moment. Russell Leavitt is the leader. On 22, Hodgman 20, Weston 19, Taylor on 18, likewise Neil Craig. So they're the favourites so far in the 1980 McGarry medal count. We'll come back in one moment's time with a counting of the first preference votes. Viewing the McGarry Medal presentation through NWS 9 Adelaide, I now have much pleasure in introducing the President of the South Australian National Football League, Mr Max Bashir. Good evening ladies and gentlemen. Tonight's meeting constitutes an official meeting of the League. Players who have been found guilty of a breach of the laws of the game are not eligible to win the medal. During the count, I will call the name of the club first and then the name of the player. I will now proceed with the count. Sturt, E. Fry. Glenelg. K. Hodgman, West Torrens, K. McSporran, Woodville, R. Sewer, Central Districts, W. Cochran. South Adelaide, M. Naley. Norwood, M. Taylor. Glenelg, P. Carey. Norwood, M. Taylor, Port Adelaide, K. Kinnear, Glenelg, R. Dean, Norwood, Michael Aish, West Torrens, B. Lindsay,
West Torrens B. Lindsay Glenelg P. Carey Port Adelaide B. Cunningham West Torrens K. McSporran Port Adelaide B. Cunningham Port Adelaide Greg Phillips Glenelg P. Carey Sturt P. Heinrich West Torrens R. Galt Port Adelaide R. Ebert Woodville R. Sewer Norwood G. Nicholson Sturt N. Craig Norwood N. Walker Sturt N. Craig North Adelaide B. Stringer Sturt E. Fry. That completes the first 30 voting papers. Thank you, Max. We still have 190 votes to be counted, but let's have a look at the top eight as it stands at the moment. And certainly a very, very interesting situation with Peter Carey polling exceedingly well there. There's the top eight. Russell Ebert still the leader on 25. Neil Craig and Michael Taylor in second position on 24. Then we have Hodgman on 23. Brian Cunningham and Paul Weston and also Bruce Lindsay on 19 and Kevin McSporran on 17. So the count at a very, very interesting stage. And now back to you, Mr President. Woodville, Ralph Sewer. Glenelg, G. Corns, Central Districts, W. Cochrane, Norwood, S. Curley, North Adelaide, R. Diorio Port Adelaide G. Phillips Port Adelaide M. Williams North Adelaide D. Allgate North Adelaide P. Cloak Port Adelaide R. Ebert West Torrens D. Cox North Adelaide G. McAdam Sturt 
R. Davies. Woodville B. Close. Norwood J. Teal. West Torrens I. Hannah. Norwood J. Teal. Port Adelaide, G. Phillips. Sturt, R. Davies. Port Adelaide, D. Kale. West Torrens, W. Primer. Port Adelaide, B. Abernethy. Glenelg, Kim Hodgman. Woodville, B. Close. Glenelg, P. Weston. Sturt, E. Fry. Port Adelaide, Tim Evans. Port Adelaide, B. Abernethy. West Torrens, D. Cox. West Torrens, P. Cousins. That completes the first 60 papers. Thank you very much, Max. Well, the count's certainly starting to warm up now. So far as the 1980 McGarry Medal situation is concerned, we'll have a look at the top eight as it stands at the moment. We'll pick up the leader. I think you'll find that Port Adelaide at this particular time are dominating the count. The leader at the moment, after the counting of the first 60 pr first preference votes, Russell Ebert on 28. Kim Hodgman 26, both Michael Taylor and Neil Craig on 24, Davies 23, Weston 22, Cunningham and Bruce Lindsay both on 19. In a moment the countdown continues for the 1980 McGarry Medal. Welcome back to the old line for the counting of the first preference votes for the leader at this stage from Port Adelaide, Russell Ebert. Back to you, Mr. President. Glenelg, G. Corns, Glenelg, P. Carey, West Torrens, R. Enright. West Torrens, M. Rendell. Norwood, M. Taylor. Norwood, P. Gallagher. South Adelaide, S. Palmer, Sturt, G. Hardiman,
South Adelaide, P. Harradine, Sturt, N. Craig, Central Districts, P. Jonas, North Adelaide, C. Stanbridge, South Adelaide, S. Palmer, Port Adelaide, B. Abernethy, Glenelg, K. Hodgman, Port Adelaide, M. Philetic, West Adelaide, R. Hamilton, Port Adelaide, M. Philetic, West Adelaide, P. Muret, West Torrens, R. Enright, Central Districts, W. Cochrane, North Adelaide, G. Schlein, Norwood, N. Walker, North Adelaide, P. Cloak, Port Adelaide, R. Ebert, Sturt, N. Craig. Woodville, B. Tyrrell, South Adelaide, F. Spiel, Norwood, M. Taylor, South Adelaide, G. Baines. That concludes 90 votes. Thank you, Max. Well, things certainly starting to hot up here with, uh, with three players at this particular stage dominating the count, Craig, Ebert and Taylor. We've still a long way to go, but there's the top eight as it stands at the moment. Russell Ebert on 31, Neil Craig and Michael Taylor together on 30, and Kimmy Hodgman on 29, Rick Davies 23, Weston 22, Brian Cunningham and Bruce Lindsay both on 19. So the count now poised at a very, very interesting situation. Let's now continue with the counting of the first preference votes. South Adelaide, F. Spiel, West Adelaide, R. Donaldson, Norwood, M. Taylor, Sturt, N. Craig, Sturt, E. Fry,
Norwood M. Taylor. North Adelaide M. Noonan. Norwood S. Hoffman. Glenelg K. Hodgman. West Torrens B. Lindsay. South Adelaide G. Baines. West Adelaide I. Borchard. Norwood G. Turbull. Woodville R. Hutton. Port Adelaide, S. Clifford. <laughs> Central Districts, W. Wilson. West Adelaide, I. Borchard. West Torrens, B. Lindsay, West Adelaide, R. Hamilton, West Adelaide, R. Bennett, South Adelaide, S. Butler, Sturt, R. Davies, West Adelaide, R. Hamilton. South Adelaide, G. Baines, West Torrens, B. Lindsay, West Torrens, B. Grinter. That's a further 30 voting papers, which takes a total. Max, you're watching the McGarry Middle presentation through Channel 9 here in Adelaide, relaying to RTS 5A in Loxon, and we certainly hope our friends of the Maryland are enjoying the McGarry Medal count. We're certainly getting to a very, very interesting stage. We have a new leader, a new leader at the moment, from Nord, Michael Taylor on 36, Craig on 33, Hodgman on 32, applause in the background, Ebert on 31, Lindsay 28, who polled well in that uh, part of the count, Davies on 26, Weston and Abernethy on 22. Peter Marker talking now to our new leader, Michael Taylor. Mike, you've got a few supporters here. Yep. How's the nervous energy? Oh, it's all right. I, uh, I've picked Russell before the count started and I think uh, Russell's going to win it. I, you know. Well, you're sitting pretty close to each other. You're comparing notes. Oh, yes. Notes uh, when table. Russell was one ahead of me there, I was 30 and he was 31. I, uh, Russell said, we'll stop the count now. So I reckon <laughs> we should stop the count now when I'm in front. Well, there's a few votes. There's a few votes to go, but it, uh, has it been your best season? Oh, by far. I'd, so it's very hard for me to say that uh, I've, I've never polled well by the umpires. This is my best year I've polled by. So I must. Uh, I don't know whether I've got any votes left or not, but I, this is my best year by far. I think you might have a few to come. Do you think so? Thanks, Mike. <laughs> Thanks, Peter. Thank you there to Peter Marker, and of course we're just over halfway mark with 100 votes still to come.
all sorts of speculation here at the moment. The old Lion Hotel, the McGarry Medal. For the league's fairest and most brilliant footballer for 1980. Now let's continue the countdown. Glenelg. G. Corns. Central Districts. P. Jonas. West Torrens, D. Cox, South Adelaide, R. Shaw, Glenelg, S. Copping. South Adelaide, G. Baines, Port Adelaide, S. Clifford, West Torrens, R. Galt, Woodville, our sewer. Central Districts, P. Jonas, Norwood, M. Taylor. North Adelaide, L. Miles, Woodville, R. Sewer, West Adelaide, I. Borchard, Glenelg, G. Corns, Port Adelaide, R. Ebert, Central Districts, M. Norsworthy. West Torrens, D. Cox, Central Districts, W. Wilson, Glenelg, P. Carey, West Adelaide, G. Filkey, West Adelaide, I. Borchard, South Adelaide, S. Emery. Norwood, P. Gallagher, Norwood, D. Jenkins, Glenelg, D. Holst, Norwood, S. Curley, Sturt, E. Fry, Glenelg, K. Hodgman, Central Districts, 
D. Cowie. Thank you very much, Max. There, that's 150 votes counted, and certainly the count at a very, very interesting stage with four players: Taylor, Craig, Hodgman, and Ebert. At this particular moment, dominating the count. And there's the top eight as it stands at the moment. Michael Taylor on top with 39. Certainly polling very well. If we can go back to the top eight, there's Michael Taylor, certainly with a big smile on his face at the moment. And of course, the count there Hodgman on 35, Ebert 34, Craig 33, Lindsay 28, Davies 26, Kerry 24, and Graham Corns on 23. Let's go back now to continue the count for the 1980 McGarry Medal. Central Districts, D. Cowie, West Torrens, R. Galt. North Adelaide, P. Cloak, Woodville, R. Sewer, Port Adelaide, G. Phillips, Woodville, be close. North Adelaide, G. McAdam, West Torrens, K. McSporran, Norwood, G. Turbull. Port Adelaide, T. Evans. <laughs> Woodville, B. Tyrrell. Port Adelaide, G. Phillips. West Adelaide, R. Hamilton, Port Adelaide, T. Evans, Glenelg, P. Carey, West Adelaide, G. Filkey. Woodville, R. Sewer, Port Adelaide, R. Ebert, Sturt, R. McGarry, Sturt, G. Reed, Central Districts, D. Mobs, Port Adelaide, G. Phillips. West Torrens, R. Galt, Port Adelaide, T. Evans, Port Adelaide, M. Williams, Glenelg, K. Hodgman, Port Adelaide, G. Phillips, West Adelaide, G. 
G. Filke. Port Adelaide, G. Phillips. Glenelg, K. Hodgman. That concludes the next 30 votes. Thank you there, Max. That concludes 180 first preference votes that have been counted. We only have 40 first preference votes to go. And let's now have a look at the top eight as it stands at the moment at a very, very interesting stage. We have a new leader from Glenelg, Kim Hodgman on 41, Michael Taylor 39, Russell Ebert on 37, Craig on 33, Phillips 32, Lindsay 28, Kerry 27, and also Ralphie Sewer coming into the top eight on 27. And Peter Marker talks with our new leader. New leader indeed. Kim, this, this must be harder than playing footy. Oh, not really. Not uh, really? Yeah, just sitting down here having a few drinks, it's all right. A few drinks you've got to play next, <laughs> next Saturday, mate. Be worry? careful. Mm. 41 votes, so there's plenty of opposition, though. Mike Taylor, Russell Ebert. Yeah, uh, I still think um, either Russell or Michael will win it. Um, I've polled as many as I can, I think. You had a couple of injuries late in the year. That uh, might have taken the uh, Yeah, the last the uh, you know, six to eight weeks was, wasn't the, the best I played, but... Um, I'm still there. Well, there's 40 votes to go, Kim, and uh, I suppose the uh, the best place to be is in front, mm. and uh, you're there. So uh, at the moment, you've got to be favourite. This Who could knows? be could be number two for Kim Hodgman. Who knows? Keep your fingers crossed. Yeah. Thanks, Kim. Peter Marker there talking to our new leader in Kim Hodgman, and certainly the most exciting part to come. You are viewing the 1980 McGee Medal presentation on Channel 9, relaying to RTS 5A in Loxton. nerve-wracking part of the evening from the old line the McGarry medal presentation count continues with only 40 votes to go over to the league president mr. Max Bashir West Torrens K McSporran Port Adelaide S Clifford Central Districts P. Vivian, West Adelaide, R. Hamilton, South Adelaide, R. Haightley, Central Districts, P. Jonas. Sturt. P. Sanders. North Adelaide. T. Hill. Central Districts. D. Mobs, Glenelg, K. Coolman, Glenelg, P. Carey, West Adelaide, I Borchard Glenelg P. Carey West Torrens R. Galt West Torrens B. Lindsay North Adelaide 
P. Cloak. Central Districts, D. Mobs. Central Districts, S. Tree. West Adelaide, R. Uh, Bennett, Port Adelaide, M. Williams, Glenelg, P. Weston, Port Adelaide, R. Uh, Ebert. Norwood, M. Taylor. Port Adelaide, R. Uh, Ebert. South Adelaide, S. Palmer. Port Adelaide, M. Falletti. <laughs> South Adelaide, S. Palmer. South Adelaide, R. White. West Torrens, A. Green. South Adelaide, P. Brooksby. I will now count the last ten voting papers. Sturt, R. Davies. West Torrens, B. Lindsay. Glenelg, P. Weston. Glenelg, K. Hodgman. Port Adelaide, R. Uh, Ebert. Norwood, M. Taylor. Sturt, G. Hardiman. Glenelg, P. Carey, Port Adelaide, R. Uh, Ebert, <laughs> and Norwood, P. Gallagher. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the 1980 McGarry Medal from Port Adelaide, Russell Ebert.
now my great pleasure to ask the President of the South Australian National Football League, Mr Max Bashir, to make the official presentation of the 1980 McGarry Medal to Russell Ebert of Port Adelaide, the first man ever to win four McGarry Medals. On behalf of all football followers in South Australia, and on my own behalf, I congratulate you, Russell, on a wonderful achievement. I'm sure that you have all of the attributes which the donor of this medal had in mind when he laid down the guidelines. You've been a wonderful ambassador for football in this state and interstate and you've brought a lot of glory on yourself, your club, and your state, and we're all very proud of you. You have achieved something that's never been done before, and I venture to say that it'll be a long, long while before it's done again. On behalf of everyone, it's my very great pleasure to present you with the 1980 McGarry Medal. Thanks very much, Max. I haven't got any cue cards here, can I? You've got them all. <laughs> After a speech like that, there's not much left to say, really. It, uh, it is a big night. Um, the count always is a big night, and they set players up, and I thought they were going to do it again. <laughs> Poor old King Owen Hodgie there. They took the brunt of it this year, which was a bit of a relief for me. But um, thanks very much to everyone here for their uh, applause. Thanks to everyone who would probably be sitting down at home by now <laughs> after... Uh, a fair bit of excitement, but uh, thanks to Port Adelaide, Big Bob uh, finishes an incredible career down there pretty soon and uh, I'm sure he'll still be around the club. To Jack, thanks for uh, the way you've accepted me back and uh, also to all the players throughout the year. Thanks to my wife and kids home, uh, to mum and dad, their continued support and all the family. Uh, hello to Bill up in Loxton, I believe you're getting this replay. So. Uh, that'll be good, he'd be pretty excited. Um, thank you to all the trainers and everyone involved at uh, Port Adelaide. I'd like to thank uh, also uh, someone you, you know but you probably wouldn't know about, and that's Ricky Montiardis, who's done a, uh, a wonderful job uh, to, along with our trainers to keep me on the track in the last half of the year. Um, and just uh, thanks to everyone, uh, and that's about it. So before you go, uh, your fourth McGarry medal, uh, would this be the highlight of your career? Obviously it would be. Uh, yeah, individually it'd have to be, of course. It'd be stupid to say anything else. Uh, but uh, I'd, <coughs> I believe uh, that it's a team game and, uh, and results in finals are the thing that we aim for. Premierships, uh, the most uh, pleasure I got out of uh, football was the 1977 Premiership. It's a team game. Everyone battles their stomach out all year uh, and it's a Premiership that is the ultimate. But individually, I suppose, the, the medal, uh, of course, is. But uh, it's a team game and Premierships are the way you get the results. Russell, were you confident uh, before the count tonight that you would win your fourth McGarry medal? No. What was the feeling like? Oh, it's hard to explain. I've sort of been set up here for years, and uh, <laughs> it, uh, nice place you, to be set up. Yeah, you, you come in and uh, you've polled pretty well in media awards and that, and uh, of course the the voting is running along a similar line now, and uh, you sort of everyone says you can win it, or this player will win it, or that player, and you're really a little bit confused, and you try and work out the good games and bad games. It's pretty hard to sit down and after a game and uh, and just think how you've played so it's sort of a confusing uh, week but uh, 
It's turned out this way. So. Russ, 49, appears to be a very lucky number for you so far as the McGarry medal count is concerned. Why is that? Well, it's a big margin, 49, isn't it? Yeah, well, it win. <laughs> win, I suppose. <laughs> Russell, what about your stint with North Melbourne? Did you enjoy that? Very much so. As I said earlier to Peter, the, the year over there uh, should be experienced by everyone. Uh, the tremendous uh, pressure you're subjected to just at training sessions to make the side. Players here probably never ever experienced, particularly the ones who don't play finals. And uh, to play, as I said, with the best and against the best uh, and just find out just how much more you can do by being exposed to the players and the pressure. Uh, people here don't realise uh, Gary Hardiman would coming from over there and, and he just realises the pressure that's involved to, uh, to make it in, uh, in Victoria and that it just teaches you how much more you can do uh, with your own sort of ability. And, and of course, Cornsey, uh, just the extra that Graham's put into his game since coming from over there just is, is proof of, uh, of how much you learn. Now, just in closing, a premiership for Port Adelaide would certainly cap a wonderful year. Certainly would. <laughs> certainly would. Gentlemen, a 1980 McGee medalist, Russell Ebert. McGarry medal belongs to Russell Ebert of Port Adelaide with 49 votes. In second position, who had a wonderful year, Michael Taylor from Norwood on 45, Kim Hodgman 44, Peter Carey 36, Bruce Lindsay 34 from West Torrens, Neil Craig a great year with the double blues on 33, Greg Phillips the centre half back from the Magpies 32 and Rick Davies 29. But the outright winner, Russell Ebert of Port Adelaide, and I'd like to call upon the general manager of the Port Adelaide Football Club, Mr Bob McLean, to come forward. Also, would Russell Ebert once again come forward, please? Russell Ebert and Mr Bob McLean. <laughs> Bob, you've got a, a very unusual uh, caricature there of, uh, of Russell Ebert. Uh, well, can we had a bit of an idea down at Port Adelaide that he just might fluke it again. <laughs> and uh, we have a caricature here of Russell Ebert that might help to pay uh, uh, the dividends for Port Adelaide this year. Uh, this is one that's available from the club and if supporters will rig into the club <laughs> or right to the club for $10, this is yours, or there's a poster for $5. It's worth keeping the first player ever to win four McGarry medals. Russell, you bloody beauty. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, Big Bob, and also Russell Ebert. I think the, uh, I think the emotion has come, has come too far. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we certainly trust you've enjoyed our coverage of the 1980 McGarry Medal. Thank you for being with us. Good night, everyone. Abernethy to centre half forward. Now Ebert takes front position and just drops the mark. And he's done it beautifully to Folletti. Now to Belton. Ebert still on the run. On the left foot. This looks mighty good for Russell Ebert. Yes, it's a goal. Port work it off their half-back flank down towards Ebert. Ebert has it. He has support from that. That was brilliant play by Ebert. Chris Nett to Paul Plesha to Ebert. Ebert has a look at the goals. Booms one off. A huge kick for Russell Ebert. And he whacks through another one. That's his second. Goes short towards half forward and a good pass from Norsworthy to Cowell. The handball not so good and there's Ebert again. Out of trouble as he's kicked towards half forward is over the head of Ebert and Sanders. Back they go for it. Sanders there, pulled off the ball by Ebert. Craig and Williams do battle. Ebert on the ground. Oh, brilliant football, Russell Ebert. Wilson, Giles, look at Ebert. Hands and knees, gets up casually. Now puts to the ball and kicks towards half forward. And Butler from behind scored for But Bob, have you ever seen anything more casual or easier than that effort of Russell Ebert? 
Only those when Barry Robram was at his heyday. I think that they compare as footballers and they're two, two of the greatest players since the war in South Australia. Ebert has to contest the boundary throw in. Oh, does it very well too. Look at the strength of Ebert. That's why he's won three McGarry medals. What a superhuman effort there from Russell Ebert who salutes the crowd.